Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We uh, are talking with Stephanie Winslow. She's a great writer. She's no stranger to Hope is Here. If you've listened to our program over the past couple of years, uh, actually, I guess about 18 months to be exact, year and a half. But uh, we're talking today about an article she wrote called Grieving the Living. And I read this article recently. Uh, she wrote it back in August of this year and just really spoke to me because you talked about, you know, not grieving necessarily a physical death loss, but other things in our life, maybe. So, uh, Stephanie, thank you for being with us again here on Hope is Here. And would you uh, share some of this article with us that you wrote recently? Yes, sir. Over the past couple of years, whether friends or family, Loss has been a frequent source of grief, pain, and sadness. There are days when I have grieved grieved more than others and days when grief has been replaced with sweet memories and laughter. In the last several months, it has come to my attention that I have been carrying grief. And yet, it is not the grief that I expected to be carrying. This grief has not been caused by the physical passing of a loved one or dear friend. This grief I am processing through is not a loss, as in the death or passing, it is a loss of what could be. In fact, I have been grieving a living person. I have been grieving the letting go of my picture of what a relationship could or should look like. In my head lives a wonderland of imagination and make-believe that has crafted the plots, resolutions, and happy endings for so many storylines that run on autopilot through my brain. My mind has predetermined how situations will work out, how relationships will blossom, and how perfectly peaceful each vision will turn out. But this wonderland of imagination making its stories come alive in my mind, has tricked me. It has tricked me into believing that I know what is best. And it has tricked me into believing that everything on this earth will be sunshine and lollipops. I had thought, I had bought into the belief that my thoughts, my plan, well, they are the plan, right? And then I end up crying, and I cry a lot, and I get brokenhearted. Why? Because the picture of my perceived reality that danced in my mind, my version of the storyline, hasn't panned out. Often the ending that I was hoping for is not even close to the outcome of the actual situation. I'm learning that grief whether over the living or the dead, is something you must walk through, not around. Walking through grief means confronting my picture, my imagination of what life could be like, and laying down that picture. Walking through grief means wanting something different than what is happening, but learning to let go and trust God with the outcome. That is so powerful because I think we all have plans in our life the way we visualize the plan. And Jeremiah 29, 11 is a verse that a lot of people are familiar with. It says, you know, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I've read that verse many times over the past 20 years, and yet one day it just jumped out to me that the word plans is in that verse, not once not twice but three times and god was just like you know greg i know sometimes you doubt me so i want you to know that i do have a plan Mm -hmm. for your one and only life so i'm going to put that word plans in there three times yet as you so eloquently said in the first part of this article you wrote called grieving the living sometimes that plan that god has for our life it's different than what maybe we envision have you found that to be true in your life yes Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I continue the article by saying that Jeremiah, who is known as the weeping prophet, walked through seasons of grieving the living himself. Jeremiah was tasked with a difficult job to execute. Jeremiah was called by God 
to go to the kingdoms of Israel and Judah and communicate to them their impending doom because he had chosen to live a life apart because they had chosen to live a life apart from God. He was grieved because he knew their future. Jeremiah, I am certain, could have wept for several reasons. He could have wept because of the situation that he found himself in. He could have wept for himself, the danger, the loneliness, and the ridicule that he faced. He could have wept because of the sad state of the chosen people of that time, people who were his family and friends. He could have wept for the souls of those who were lost, deceived and searching after their own way. Jeremiah questioned the position the people were in, saying in chapter 8, 21 through 22, Since my people are crushed, I am crushed. I mourn and horror grips me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there no healing for the wound of my people? Jeremiah was living in the trenches with broken people, casting a vision to call them out of dark places and to live the ways of their forefather David and to live according to God's perfect law. He hurt because the people hurt. He grieved the loss of their souls, their connection as brothers and sisters and the followers of God. Jeremiah was grieving for the ones who had chosen to follow their own way instead of the ways of the Father. In these verses, we are told he grieves for them as though they are physically sick, looking for a solution with doctors and medicine. He knew that there was no medicine that could cure their ailment. He knew their sickness was not a sickness of the body, but a sickness of the heart. Jeremiah knew no balm or physician could heal their souls. Only God could do that. He ached because he knew what could be if only they turned their lives back to God. It was the aching of his heart that drove him to present the message impressed on him by God to share, no matter the heartache. As believers living in a fallen world who grieve the things that grieve the heart of God, May we, at, we may at times feel the same weight of sin and even the weight of isolation simply because of the desire to live a different standard of life. But just like Jeremiah, I pray that as we are grieving the living among us, that our grieving stirs us to proclaim the truth of God and when we are prompted to do so by the Holy Spirit. May our grieving be a sign that we are walking through the pain and not settling into it. May our grieving be a sign that our eyes are not are set on eternity and not on the temporal world. So today I leave you with this. Who, whether lived, living or past, are you grieving? Or what are you grieving? Do you believe that there is a message God has for you to learn and then share as you walk through this grief? Is there a part of your grief that you have been trying to walk around? What do you need to walk through today? Trust that God is with you. Trust that he is right there with you, holding your hand and waiting for you on the other side. He is even hemming you in behind as you move forward. Trust him with your grief. Trust him to teach you and grow you through it all. Such a powerful article. Stephanie Winslow is our guest today here on Hope is Here. Uh, this article she is sharing she wrote recently called Grieving the Living. And you can find more about what she writes. She's got a great blog at AscentToHope.com. That's AscentToHope.com. And you know one of the things you talked about there in the last part of that article about that if you'll trust God to teach you, he can grow you through it all. And I heard a pastor say one time, God had one son without sin, no son without sorrow. 
And so, unfortunately, because mm-hmm. we live in a fallen world, until we get to heaven, we are going to have disappointments and heartaches. But I think the key is is that we have to grieve those losses. And when we ignore those, um, they can do a lot of damage in our hearts and our minds and in our relationship with God, too, can't they, Stephanie? Yeah, I think that's, you know, what what's the thing that I was talking about in this article that I was personally grieving is, is the loss of a relationship or um, what I thought this relationship with my sibling would look like so you know as kids you have this idea you grow up together and you do life together as you get older and there's a picture in your mind of what it will look like and as you grow things happen life happens circumstances happen and your relationship doesn't look like at all what you thought it would and I hadn't really recognized it until just this year that I've been sad, just really sad about how I relate um, to my brother and and what our relationship looks like. And so God is teaching me, though, that the more that I can recognize when I'm grieving and what are those pictures I have that I'm, or disappointments that I'm carrying and you know, just like anything else, and we have to lay those things down before him and, and ask him to help me let go of them because it's it's just like packing on a bunch of weight in a backpack and not being able to hike very long because I'm overwhelmed by what's in my pack. And God tells me that often that these things are not yours to carry. And so he does. He teaches us and he trains us as long as we're willing to continue to be faithful and to show up and to let go. All of these things take courage and and um, a willing heart. Well, if you're listening today, and I know especially for men, uh, we like to stuff things and just kind of, you know, tighten your bootstraps up and suck it up, to use a sports term, coaches, when you get fatigued and things. And yet, uh, I tell you, God wants us to, to be able to grieve those losses. And we had somebody that listens uh, to Hope is Here regularly, and they contacted me once because we had a topic that uh, they had never told anybody about. We addressed that topic, and uh, it was about being sexually violated as a child. And so we met for coffee, and then I got them connected with a Christian counselor. And after seeing them for, I think, about three times, just tremendous freedom set in because they grieve over what happened in their childhood. And it happened mm-hmm. 30 years before, and they had never told anybody. And so there's a lot of healing that can come when we grieve something that happens in our lives, isn't it, Stephanie? Absolutely. That's an amazing example. And holding it all in, I think we feel like we, we can handle it. Like, I'm, I'm strong enough. We convince ourselves that we're strong enough to handle it. And, it, you know, it's sometimes I think, yeah, like, I can, I, I can deal with this on my own. But but the point for me is is that I don't need to like I don't I don't need to carry this stuff and it just weighs me down and it makes me less productive and the more that I hand over and the more I'm willing to give over to God the more useful he makes me for his kingdom because it's like shedding these layers of all this garbage that I've just been carrying and stuffing and poking into all the you know places <laughs> And it's it turns kind of crazy after a while, but um, yeah. So there's I'm sure you know in my life many more things that I still need to grieve over, and I'm walking through. Um, it's a process like anything else, and we never really arrive. But it's just having an awareness of it for me is what's kind of like the big aha. Of like wow, I didn't realize that I could grieve someone. And something, this idea well, that I was. Oh, such good stuff. Stephanie, I hate to cut you off, but we are out of time. But we've been talking with Stephanie Winslow. I want to encourage you to check out her blog, AscentToHope.com. I also will get her out a copy of her outstanding book, Ascent to Hope. We'll see you next time on Hope is Here.